Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com for premium picks. Look us up, we're in the sports section on Roku, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. I believe a championship is going to change hands. Right now, champion Richard Abril, after what should have been a win over Brandon Rios, we all know he won the fight. Only the judges don't, right? And after officially winning the title um, against Sharif Bogare, I know the boxing hardcore is going to say he was awarded the title before the fight, but any award should go out of the window since he actually went forward with the fight and won the title in the ring. Right? Reaffirmed his title award. Richard Abril is going to fight, simply put, a better fighter. Jorge Linares. Now, I know many people are shaking their heads. Linares has lost three times. Right? He has been knocked out cold early in the Salgado fight several years ago. He did get stopped by Tony DeMarco, and he got stopped early by Sergio Thompson. Right? But I believe if you look at the fights, the last two losses, not the first one, which was kind of a one-punch knockout, but the last two, you'll actually see that in the DeMarco fight, Linares was winning that fight. He had the fight won. The problem is a fighter really can't prepare for torn skin. And in that fight, there was a headbutt. There was blood on Linares' face. And that blood literally started dripping to the canvas. His face looked like a bloody mess. He continued to dominate the fight. He had a hand speed advantage on Linares, excuse me, on Tony DeMarco. He moves very well. He is very slick in the ring. He has excellent head movement. What he doesn't have is great skin. He has a lot of scar tissue. And his skin tends to bleed. Right? The problem with scar tissue is that it makes it more likely that the surrounding skin is going to tear. So his cut in the DeMarco fight led to blood dripping in his eye, led to problems, right? And of course, led to a late stoppage. In the Sergio Thompson fight, understand, while he got hit, he also got cut again. And the cuts ended that fight early. So, here he is fighting a Brill who's a slender guy who knows how to use length and who has an excellent jab and who fights you at a side profile. But he doesn't have a lot of power. He doesn't have a lot of volume. He doesn't throw the kind of quick combinations that Jorge Linares throws. So what I'm expecting is Linares to literally outwork a brill. More importantly, Linares hits a lot harder than a brill. There's even a possibility that Linares, if he goes to the body and if he sustains the attack, might even stop a brill. Understand, the two guys a brill recently fought, Brandon Rios, always on his front foot, always coming forward, no reverse gear. Sharif Bogare, a leaper. He's outside. He's always leaping in. There was a height dynamic in that fight. Abril was a lot taller. Quite frankly, I thought Bogare won the fight. I know no judge agrees with me. Fair enough. But let's just say that that fight was closer than it looked. But again, in that fight, because of the reach disadvantage that Bogare was operating under, Bogare had to constantly leap in to try to time Richard Abril, who's a defensively minded counterpuncher and who grabs you when you get inside, right? Abril fights really 
a Vladimir Klitschko type of fight, but doesn't have Klitschko's power, right? It's a long jab, a left hook, and a sneaky right hand. That's it. I believe that what Linares can do with a bigger punch is circle a brill. Fight really a Manny Pacquiao type of fight. Use the entire ring. Have a brill look like his feet are in cement. Move around the ring and then when a brill comes over throw fast combinations. Get in, get out, and of course do so with power. Right? Linares is so fast that Linares can come in and throw hooks. He doesn't have to just come in and touch you with a jab. He can come in, set his feet, get leverage, throw hooks, just like Manny Pacquiao. Powerful hooks. And then get back out. Right? Linares, in other words, can fight an ambush fight. And can take you out. Right? Throw in the fact that this fight is in Japan where Linares is very popular. And I believe what you have here is a coup. I think Jorge Linares takes the title from Richard Abril. I know Abril is a guy who's had some high profile fights. Folks, he has less than 10 KOs, right? This is not a power puncher, but let me say this, you need to be aware that when you're dealing with a guy who cuts like Linares, you can have a situation where, as in many years ago, the Lennox Lewis, Vitaly Klitschko fight. Linares looks good, right? Vitaly looked good against Lennox Lewis. But then it doesn't matter because a cut might open that's so bad. And keep in mind, just like in the Vitaly Klitschko fight, where Vitaly's cut was bloody and blood was dripping down. Linares has had bloody cuts that drip. Right? There is a possibility, especially since Abril has an excellent jab and Linares likes to drop his hands and use head movement to dodge jabs. There is a possibility that a jab could open up a bad cut that might negate Linares' physical superiority. In any event, I like Jorge Linares to win this fight. I'm going to fly naked here. I'm not going to hedge the play. I like Linares to take Abril's title. This is a fight you need to look at. Let me just say this, too. I think Linares is the kind of guy who, style-wise, would give a lot of fighters out there a lot of problems, and that includes Adrian Broner. Don't be intimidated by the fact that Linares has three losses, including two recent losses. Tony DeMarco was really being dominated in that fight before he got the late KO, and DeMarco, of course, is one of the harder punchers in the division. Right? So, my point is simply this. There are some uncrowned champions in the sport, guys with talent who, for whatever reason, cuts at the wrong time, uh, referees, as in the Thompson fight, who are a bit premature in ending a fight. For whatever reason, there are guys out there who are very talented who just haven't gotten over the hump. Right? Carlos Molina until he fought Ishi Smith. My point is, you need to consider Jorge Linares to be more talented than his record. I think he takes the title against Richard Abril. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.